Hi there, good golf here, with a new video on creating an Azure virtual machine for Forge networking. So what's the use of an Azure VM? Well, you can host your master server and or your NetHall punch-through server, and you can host your server with authoritative game logic, which we briefly discussed in the previous video, and next video will all be about authoritative game logic servers. I've included a quick preview of what's to come here below. First of all, you have to create an Azure account and log in. You can create an Azure account through https azure.microsoft.com and next you need to go to the portal.azure.com and log in. Please note there are some discounts available. If you look around, uh, you may be able to find a discount or a month's trial with some credit in it. So it definitely is worthwhile to spend a few minutes on searching for that. In my case, I had an Office 365 developer tenant, which came with quite a few months of free credit. Not a lot, but enough to just run a single Azure server. Okay, next, when you have logged into the Azure portal, first thing to do is create a resource. You get this screen and you have to select a Windows Server 2016 VM. You have to fill in a few of the basics here. So name, of course, the name of the virtual machine. Uh, username and password are used to log in with the remote session to the server. If this is the first time you create a VM, you probably have to create a new uh, uh, resource group. Otherwise, you can reuse a, a resource group if you want to. Then you choose a size for the VM. And I usually take the B2S which is heavy enough to run uh, Unity, but is also, uh, let's say, not too expensive. And it, it says here for a Western Europe instance, uh, just over 40 euros a month. However, you only pay for it to run. So if you only run it, let's say 20% of the time in a month, then you only pay 20% of those uh, almost 41 euros. You can scroll down, uh, there's way more options, heavier machines, there's even a few machines in there with uh, graphics cards. If you uh, really want to take it up a notch, you could probably run uh, the Unity uh, kit on such a server and then sort of through cloudy gamer setup, uh, see what's happened on your, uh, your laptop and stream the video. But for now it's good enough to pick a simple VM. Then there's a few other settings you need to uh, do. Configure optional features. I typically uh, enable the auto shutdown to make sure it shuts down every day at the end of the working day or at least at the end of the day. Uh, also to keep uh, costs in check if you happen to forget it once. And what's also important here is to select the network security group. So. You create new rules. Uh, in this case, as you can see, I added an inbound security rule for port 15930, which is the uh, headless server port you will need for uh, Forge Networking. And by the way, name it properly. I forgot to rename it here, so uh, it should have written there uh, port 15937 as name for the port. This is nice that they added this feature uh, recently to setting up an Azure VM because you had to go through quite a few screens to get here after provisioning the server. Now you can actually create those rules up front. And what's also important to know, these are the 
Azure Firewall rules, you will also have to enable this port on the local firewall. We will see that later. OK, then you will get the overview of the settings you've selected. Basically, you have to uh, check the box and create. It will now take probably about between 10, 15 minutes for the server to get uh, provisioned and uh, it will be up and running. So uh, you will get a notification like this. Uh, the deployment of the, uh, the server was successful, at least hopefully it was. And then uh, definitely use the uh, pin to dashboard to easily get to it. And this is what it will look like if you clicked on the pinned resource. And the important thing to know is use the connect button here. And it will download the uh, file for the uh, RDP connection. And of course you can also here start or stop the uh, virtual machine manually. What's also useful to do is to configure the DNS name to get easy access because the IP address will change every time you um, start or stop the VM. So add a DNS name here and then uh, the server will be like your server name dot then the region you have selected for your Azure dot cloud app dot Azure dot com. When you've downloaded the RDP connection uh, it's definitely uh, worthwhile to do a bit of editing. Um, what I did here is basically add uh, local devices and resources to the connection. So my local drive on my development PC so I can easily upload uh, files from that drive to the Azure, um, Azure VM because you will have access through Internet Explorer using the RDP to your local drive. When you connect to the server using RDP, of course you first need to log in and then in the server you will get this server manager dashboard which you can use to add some features to the server. Uh, you may want to add for example .NET Framework features for the um, master server uh, which uh, runs on uh, the .NET Framework. As I mentioned before, uh, we already opened up the Azure firewall but now we also need to open the local firewall on the server. So you open the command prompt and basically through this command shown here you can add a rule for the local firewall to allow incoming traffic to port 15937. Always be cautious when editing the firewall rules, whether it's the Azure firewall rules or the rules on the local server because before you know it you exclude your RDP port and then um, you can't access your virtual machine anymore and you will have to start from scratch. As I mentioned before, when you've edited the RDP file, you can actually copy files to the server easily. You open the Explorer on the remote server and you will see it accesses the uh, F drive on my local machine. Okay, um, that's it for today. Some quick tips here. Uh, compute costs as I mentioned before, or a percentage of the monthly cost, you actually use it. So make sure you switch off the VM as soon as you're not using it anymore. It will save you costs. Um, disk space costs continue even if the VM is switched off. So, for example, if for a few weeks you will not be using the server, you can delete it and uh, then you won't uh, incur the cost. It's pretty easy if you've done it before to create the VM from scratch in a few minutes. There's also an option now to create templates uh, which you can uh, store locally and then uh, from the Azure portal create the server again through a template. I've tried it a few times. It's not really stable yet. So hopefully uh, Microsoft will improve this process and then uh, really with the click of the button you can create a new server again. So, okay, that's it. Um, next time we will look at some uh, code to do authoritative game server logic, so anti-cheat when all the game logic is run on the server which you can put on an Azure instance like this. Thanks for tuning in and if you like the video please vote it up.